We're in cruise on a flight over the Blue Ridge Mountains en route to Elkins, West Virginia, to take an opportunity to learn about the features on the multifunction display, the MFD of the G1000. This display is the PFD, which we use for primary instrumentation, navigation, and communication needs. And this is the MFD, which contains many more options for our awareness in flight. The MFD can be thought of as a book, which contains chapters and pages. We can use the FMS knob to flip through this book. The outer FMS knob flips through the chapters or groups of which there are five, titled Map, Waypoint, Auxiliary, Flight Plan, and Nearest. Each chapter has a number of pages. The map chapter has navigation map, IFR, VFR charts, traffic map, weather data link, and TAWS B. We can move the outer FMS knob over to the right one click to pull up the next chapter, Waypoint. The pages here are Airport, Intersection, NDB, VOR, VRP, and User Waypoint information. The next chapter is Auxiliary, with eight of its own pages. This is followed by the Flight Plan chapter, and finally at the very end is the Nearest chapter. The positioning of the Nearest chapter at the end is on purpose, so that in a pinch, If we need to find the nearest airport or area of interest, we just give the outer FMS knob a good turn to the right to cycle through all these chapters. It stops on nearest no matter how many more times we click the knob to the right. It doesn't cycle back to the beginning of the list. Each of these pages contain a number of functions that'll help us in flight, beginning with the navigation map page. If we push the map options soft key, we can configure the moving map we're currently viewing. The traffic soft key will display traffic. We're zoomed out a good deal here to see the full flight path, so we'll need to zoom in a bit for the traffic targets to appear. We'll do that by twisting the range knob on the right side of the bezel, and can now see the traffic targets around the aircraft, and their altitude relative to ours. If we push the inset soft key and the VSD soft key, we get what's known as a vertical situation display. It's a profile view of our flight, showing our current and selected altitude 6,000 feet and our clearance above any terrain along our route. Again, we can zoom out with our range knob to see the entire route to Elkins. Our 6,000 feet is enough to clear the mountains with a little room to spare, but we may consider climbing just a bit more. Back on the map options subpage, we can move to the soft key to the side of inset and toggle terrain options. Right now the MFD is showing topographic information on the moving map. Pushing this once shows us heights of terrain relative to our altitude. The legend at the bottom right shows the color coding. There's some terrain further along our route that's between 1 and 2,000 feet below our current altitude. We could hit the soft key again to remove all terrain overlay on the moving map. The soft key to the right of this one toggles airways. As you can see the various federal airways overlaid on the map. There are weather options on the Map Options subpage here. Next rad will overlay composite radar. If we zoom out, we can see areas of precipitation around the country, just like you would on a weather map. In the top right, the age of this information is displayed. Typically, this will be about five minutes behind real time, though here it's displayed at 19. This is important as it's possible to fly through precipitation even in areas that aren't painted on the display here due to the timing lag. We're also able to overlay detected lightning strikes via XM weather. If we zoom in again and hit METAR, we get a color-coded representation of the weather flight category of nearby airports based on their METARs. We can hit the legend soft key to see what the colors correspond to. If we hit back and get out of the map option subpage, the last thing we could do on the navigation page is change the detail of labeling on the moving map, excluding things like roads and airports as desired. Let's pull up the MFD chapters by turning the outer FMS knob one click right and we can move to the next page in the map chapter. IFR VFR charts by turning the inner knob one click right. This displays first a representation of a VFR sectional on our moving map with airways, airports, and airspace overlaid. We can bring up the same thing for an IFR low or high and root chart with the soft keys. If we twist the outer knob and then twist the inner knob right one more click, we go down to the traffic map. This shows just traffic relative to our position and altitude, and we can zoom in and out as we would any other map using the range knob. Next in the map chapter is the weather data link page. 
This is your source of weather maps, just like you'd find on sites like the Aviation Weather Center. We can access imagery maps like radar echo tops, cloud tops, weather cell movement vectors, and SIGMETs and AIRMETs. If we zoom in, we can see SIGMETs along our route. And by hitting the Legend soft key, can see what colors correspond to what advisories. We also have the same METAR overlay from earlier. If we hit the More WX soft key, we see more options. Cyclone tracks the predicted movement of major low pressure systems like hurricanes and tropical storms. The next soft key brings up surface prog charts for current time and forecasted out in 12 hour intervals. It shows localized forecasts, fronts, and high and low pressure systems. Again, we can overlay a legend. Another nice feature is finding the lowest freezing level in the area we're flying in. We can see winds both aloft here at 6,000 feet or at the surface. We can see any pyreps that were reported in the area, as well as any countywide warnings issued by the National Weather Service with things like tornadoes or thunderstorms. We'll back out of this and twist the inner FMS knob one more time to the right to bring up the final page in this map group, the TAWS B Terrain Avoidance and Warning System Class B. This allows us to see relative altitude of terrain on the map, just as we did on the map options page with topography. Let's flip to the next chapter. We'll twist the outer FMS knob once to the right to move to the waypoint group. The first page is airport information. It defaults to our destination of Elkins. One very useful feature here is that if we push the FMS knob and scroll to the frequencies, we can set them into our COM1 and 2. So if we scroll to the AWOS, then push the COM knob to move down to COM2, and then hit enter, we've input the AWOS into COM2 standby, and that could be flipped to active. We could do the same thing with the CTAF and put that into COM1 standby. If we hit the info soft key, we can bring up more info on the airport, showing the airport directory entry from the chart supplement, which we can scroll through. There are soft keys showing instrument procedures. There are no departure procedures or arrival routes for Elkins, but we could preview approaches for Elkins. We could see weather, both a decoded version of the METAR and the TAF. Now the next several pages, information on waypoints like intersections and VORs, we'll leave for now and come back to after we've played around with our flight plan a bit. Let's move over to the auxiliary chapter now. The first page, trip planning, allows us to see calculations for our flight like estimated time to destination and fuel burn, much like we would have done on our old paper and pencil nav logs. The utility page has timers that we could set for various things and allows us to schedule reminders on the right side that'll enunciate on the PFD at a given time. The next page shows GPS status for reception, and we can compute rain prediction at our destination if we want. The system setup shows display preferences like units of measurement and metric or standard, alerts for certain type of airspace, and we could configure a minimum runway length and surface to filter out airports from our nearest list that we don't want to see. We'll move to the XM radio page to see that setup if this were connected. The system status displays the status of the Lion replaceable units, the LRUs of the G1000 system. This can be really valuable for diagnosing problems in flight. For example, a faulty AHARS that disables some instrumentation can be identified by looking at this status page. The Connect setup is for Bluetooth connections for things like Flightstream that allow you to push flight plans from your tablet onto the G1000. Finally, the databases show the status of the databases on the unit to see if anything needs to be updated prior to a flight. Moving past the auxiliary chapter, we come to FPL, Flight Plan. We can also pull this up by hitting the FPL hard key on the side of the bezel. Our current flight plan is shown with a pink bracket showing the leg we're currently on. Let's identify an intermediate waypoint between us and Elkins to put into the flight plan. We'll push the range button to activate the cursor on the map. We can then push the range button like a joystick to move that cursor around. If we then zoom in, we could see this waypoint LDN55. We can add this to our flight plan by hitting the FMS knob, scrolling to en route, and keying in LDN55 using the FMS knobs. Now we're still navigating to Elkins as it's indicated in pink, so let's hit the FMS knob, scroll over to the new waypoint, and hit direct, enter, enter. We're now navigating to LDN55. 
Let's head back to the waypoint group by twisting that outer FMS knob left a few times. Then let's move to the intersection page by twisting the inner knob right once. We now have information about the waypoint we're navigating towards. We can use the flight plan page to help us in our descent to Elkins. We'd like to plan a descent to arrive at pattern altitude just prior to reaching the airport. If we scroll back to the waypoint group, we can find the airport elevation, 1,987 feet on the airport page. Adding 1,000 to this gives a pattern altitude of 3,000 feet. Back on the flight plan page, we can push the FMS knob and scroll to the destination and input a desired altitude, 3,000 feet. After we hit enter, the VNV profile below is populated. Also, a point on the map comes up TOD, top of descent. The system has calculated a point to start a descent to get from our current altitude to our selected altitude. It uses a descent angle to calculate this. Here it defaults to 2.5 degrees down. We're in mountainous terrain, so let's check how smart of a plan this descent really is. We'll scroll back to the map group, hit Map Options, then VSD. The same profile view comes up as before, only now we can zoom out and see our descent profile. And it gets awfully close to terrain short of the airport. We may want to start a descent later and make it steeper. So let's go back to the flight plan page, scroll to that descent angle, and increase it from 2.5, and notice as we do so that TOD point moves further away along the route. And if we decrease the angle, the point moves back up. This also affects our target vertical speed in feet per minute, as well as the estimated time until we reach top of descent. Now, if we check that profile on the map page, we have a bit more clearance in the descent. Okay, last thing on the flight plan group is the stored flight plans. We could save this flight plan by hitting the menu hard key and scrolling to store flight plan, making it easier to load next time. The last chapter here is the nearest group. This shows an up-to-date list of the nearest airports, including their magnetic bearing and distance, and it also has pages for things like nearest intersection and VOR. In addition to all these page groups, our engine instrumentation is also displayed down the left side of the MFD, including power settings, fuel flow and quantity, oil pressure and temperature, engine temperatures, and electrical load indications. This will look different depending on which aircraft you're flying. We'll take a closer look at these indications, as well as how to use various tools in flight, in a later section of the course.